We're inside the Gramercy Theater here in New York City where Fear Factory is sold out in the Gramercy Theater. How does it feel to fucking, you know, especially with the state of the industry, to sell out a show, especially in New York, man? I love it. I love New York City. Um, as you know, I used to live in Brooklyn. Yeah, I think I saw you there once or twice. <laughs> um, eating pizza. <laughs> eating pizza. Who doesn't? Um, yeah, it's. It, I lo New York has always been cool to Fear Factory. You know, it's always, even though we're from LA, just New York just took to us really I mean, strongly. I mean, you know, WSO used to have Fear, Fa Fear Factory at five. You know, and. Uh, for a long time, and ever since then, it's just been done, doing really well, and it's always a good homecoming here. But it's also because of the quality of the work you guys put out. First I and foremost, so. we got to talk about the industrialist. I've been able to listen to it, digest it, uh, and it's it's cool because you've obviously done thematic albums. Absolutely, is obviously a very thematic album, yeah. and this is another angle with it. So for the people watching, why don't we talk about that? You know, that obviously the difference between the concept of you know Fear Factory before and now. Well, this concept uh, is a little different. Um, it still goes along the uh, thinking of man versus machine, a futuristic story of man versus machine. And, uh, but this time is from the perspective of the machines. Excuse me. It's, uh, the industrialist is an automaton that has become sentient. It's aware of its being. And because of its awareness, it has discovered a will to survive. And so, it's take you know it's gathering like you know like thinking like minded automatons of its kind uh, and leading them and sort of you know to uh, teaching them and helping them survive just like it is and the story is a little bit more involved in obviously where um, you know, it's going to the manufacturing plants and the fabrication industries to where the creator you know, started all the, you know, creating the automatons and it's actually finding, it's destroying the creator's industry and searching for the creator it's himself to come face to face with his maker. And that's pretty much where we're standing right now when you look at, you know, the whole world around us is basically like everything is so, and it, it's a little scary how much things have changed and you know when you say that the machines you know you know it's not necessarily the machines are taking over but they have taken about people's minds people are not thinking for themselves anymore really not many people there are people who are but um there's a lot of people who aren't and and i always think of that movie Shaun of the dead and it's just like people just going around like zombies um their day-to-day -day routine not really interested in doing anything else it's just kind of like sheep and uh there's there's always been people like that. It's just there's more of them now, and uh, part of part of the system, part of the society, is to keep people uninformed, to keep people uneducated, and because of that, you know, people don't care. There's, they're apathetic, but there are, with the people that are aware of what's going on and actually see the world as it is, who can actually laugh at? It's like, what you believe that? Really? You believe? You believe ex every word that person just told you? Come on. Um, there's a, there's quite a few of us around, and if we can educate the ma help educate the masses and help educate our fans and you know not even not necessarily just music but writers, painters, um, any type of artist, uh, photographers who can show you know give the perspective of like look check this out this is this is how we see it you know then people will become aware slowly but surely surely same hopefully soon right but hey we got to talk about the new lineup you have some new members in the band why don't you take us a little bit of the transition when you finish the mechanized world global tour that you did so successful tool you know then when it was time to get into the studio record a new album and get some more pieces to the puzzle because you needed to you know you face a situation that you have to bring new people to the band well after after fear factor finished its mechanized uh cycle <clears throat> um byron and i went to vancouver to work on the city of fire album and that you know we wrote and wrote and recorded a lot of it in toronto but things fell out up there and we had to make new plans and we finished oh, we finished recording it in Toronto re-recorded everything now it just that it took really like six to eight months to really get everything together and uh, finally finished that 
properly, but now we're just waiting for distribution because we don't have distribution yet. So um, hopefully next year it will come out. Otherwise, uh, we started writing the Fear Factor record in October of 2011, and Gene had made commitments. So you know, he's like he's a obviously a excellent drummer in high demand. So he made commitments. Was okay. So we made uh, other arrangements to uh, start using a, a drum machine. Byron, you know, he uh, wanted to had his personal reasons to leave. So um, everything's still cool. But uh, you know, we had to find once we finished recording the album because Dino played guitar and bass on the album. There was a drum program as drums, and Reese Fulber uh, did all the keys and co-produced it with Dino and myself and all three of us pretty much wrote the record and um, so when it was done I was like okay now we need a bass player so um, we caught we thought for a long time and then suddenly out of the blue the name Matt DeVries came up I'm like what so we didn't even have to really we didn't really have to uh, audition him because we know he was a great ba bass player and then we, uh, we had to we I did audition a few drummers and then uh, Mike Heller uh, got the part I heard he was the last audition you did when you guys were kind of scratching your heads and he was the one that suddenly just hit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, you know when it's the one. And when you guys first played together for the first time, you know, with a new generation of Fear Factory, how was it feeling for you? Were you like immediately like, all right, we did the right decision? Yeah, it all felt good. You know, I, <clears throat> I, uh, it was good to be back on the road. It's good to be playing again with Dino. Um, things are really great and uh, ready to rock. And hey, by the way, I'm going, everybody was kind of waiting for that reunion of you guys, and Mechanized was a great result of that. But what I think the industrial is, is like the next level of you guys kind of already being very comfortable back and working together. That's exactly and then what it is. That's exactly what it is. You know, we're, um, Dino and I don't have to uh, reacquaint ourselves. on the, We didn't have to reacquaint ourselves on this record. It was all about the music and writing it, and it was great. And if you have to, let's say, pinpoint a few songs that either thematically or when you were in the studio that you just kind of give you, you know, like a great energy and you were just like, these are the songs that are going to be the next Sonic Assault, what, which songs would you point out? I think God Eater's a really good track. It's a it's a real epic track. And it's something, you know, something rather, we haven't done something like this in a long time. And it came out really cool. So check that one out. And what's in the agenda for the rest of the year? Because obviously now that the album is coming out, by the way, June 5th, all over the world. And what's in the agenda for the summer and beyond? We got a tour coming up. We're doing the summer festivals in June. We're doing, uh, uh, coming back, doing Shockwave in July. And then um, we're trying to still try to sort something out for August. And uh, hopefully then go back to Europe in November, December, do a headlining tour. And then we'll see what happens after that. Any music videos in the works or any yeah, treatments or anything? Um, there's a director making a video for New Messiah right now. And what's cool is that I'm really stoked about it because it's the first video that, will, that there will not be a band performance in. Cool. So it's straight, like, storyline. It's like a movie soundtrack. Cool. Burn, before we get out of here, any final words for the past, present, and future fans of Fear Factory? Thanks for believing in us. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you later. Nothing.